tonight. Multiple invests designated as development continues. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for July 25th. The no tropical cyclones active graphic still lingers as nothing naval is active right about now. However, some invests have sprung up, but for now, the number of storms formed so far this year remains at 36. Now, once again, it's all quiet on the Western Front, and by that I mean in the Atlantic, on day 55 of hurricane season. An invest has been designated over in the Eastern Pacific. It is now known as 97E. This system is expected to continue northwestwards, paralleling the coast of Mexico, but as of this moment, we have upped our chances to 80% along with the National Hurricane Center. Jumping to the other side of the Pacific now, the chances for 92W are rapidly dropping as we've, again, lowered our chances for this system down to 10%, and I believe this system has already been axed by the JTWC, so this system is incredibly unlikely to become anything significant. It's business as usual in the North Indian Ocean, as nothing is expected to form in this part of the world as is the norm for this time of year. But surprisingly there is development in the southwest Indian Ocean in the form of 95S, which we have once again given a 10% chance of formation. It Now it's not unheard of to have an out of season cyclone, but it's incredibly common and it's just slightly more common to have these uh, random invests spring up out of nowhere, believe it or not, um, out of season. Um, once again, they don't really form into anything with much, as you can see, our 10% chance that we've given it. Now, jumping into the satellite imagery with the Atlantic, once again, nothing notable is occurring here at the current moment, and nothing is expected in the next five days from now. 97E is making its way across the coast of Mexico with an 80% chance of formation. Now, could this be our next system? Only one way to find out. However, 92W hanging on for dear life as it loses its chance to form into anything noteworthy. Now, essentially, this we're saying goodbye to 92W here. Now, a view across the entire Indian Ocean, north and south, gives us a good view over 95S. Now, I'm not sure exactly where the center of the system is, so I've tried my best to place it uh, on your screen right there. Uh, regardless, 95S has a 10% chance of formation. It's not expected to form into anything significant, mind you, but once again, the chances are there. Now, don't forget, you can go to our merch store where you can buy things such as individual animations, pillows, or even a mug that you can use to drink some tea or your preferred beverage of choice out of whilst you work. Just make sure that your cat doesn't slide it off the table and onto the floor where it will shatter all over the place. Um, don't forget, our Hone shirts remain on sale, marking a thousand days of the Central Pacific storm, refusing to get up and out of bed and go to work like the stereotypical teenager it is. Moving on, the Western Pacific remains piping hot with 30 degree waters, the Bay of Bengal remains around 28 degrees, the Arabian Sea largely around 27, with temperatures off the coast of Somalia significantly cooler. The tropical Atlantic remains nice and toasty with waters reaching 28 degrees in the main development region, the Gulf of Mexico however remaining with 30 degree temperatures. The tropical Eastern Pacific remains largely 28 degrees as does the Central Pacific. Moving into the sea surface temperature anomalies, the Eastern and Central Pacific are warming up still slightly below average, but in places they're getting rather above average. The Western Pacific still remains warmer than average, the Atlantic also pretty much above, but once again, a, a hard to miss pocket of below average in the subtropics. The Bay of Bengal above average, the Arabian Sea is once again all over the place, most notably present is a pocket just off the coast of Somalia extending into the purples, which as you can see on the scale on the bottom of your screen there means incredibly below average. 
Now oceanic heat content in the Atlantic continues to improve with the most notable areas still residing in the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Sea, but the main development region is also continuing to gain some significant energy. The Western Pacific remains full of energy with a lot of red towards the east of the Philippines, and with the Eastern and Central Pacific gaining small amounts of energy, but once again it's no contest at the moment between the Eastern and Central compared to the Western Pacific. On this day brings us back to 2020. Tonight our main feature was Hurricane Hannah, which made landfall today as a Category 1 hurricane over in the United States, in Texas more specifically. Uh, also active in the Atlantic was Gonzalo, which had just been named. And over in the Eastern Pacific, Douglas was weakening from its Category 4 peak just to the southeast of Hawaii. Elsewhere, nothing was active. Of course, 2020 is known for being an extremely active year. So that brings us to the next names in each basin's respective naming lists. First up in the Atlantic, or next up in the Atlantic I should say, is Danielle, followed by Earl. Up next in the Eastern Pacific is Frank, followed by Georgette. And you really, you guys, you really do not need me to say this, but the next name in the Central Pacific is still Hone. Up next in the Western Pacific, ending off list 4 is Songda and beginning list 5 is Tresez. I hope I've pronounced that one correctly as per the normal. If I haven't, then I apologize. And up next in the North Indian Ocean is Sitrang, followed by Mandus. Bringing things over to the Southern Hemisphere, starting off with the Australian region. Next up is Darien, followed by Ellie. First up in the Southwest Indian Ocean is Ashley, followed by Belita. And up next in the South Pacific is Harley. That's all from me for now. We'll see you for another Tropic Weather Bulletin tomorrow night.